So my name is Julianne Colwell and I'm the band's director here at ACP. I got my degree in music performance. So I got my degree in saxophone and I mainly studied jazz music and I realized that I really loved teaching and I loved teaching middle school ages. So um, when I started this job, it was like my dream come true. It's been super fun. <laughs> Band class is a really fun class. We work together as a class to decide what songs we want to play and learn. You get to learn different instruments, so you might want to start on one main instrument, but you can also learn different instruments throughout the school year, which is really awesome. And you get to perform a couple times a year, and you get to learn how to listen to music differently. You get to learn how to read rhythms and work together as a group. So there's lots of different things you can do in band other than just reading music out of a book. It's a little bit more open than that. I think that students want to take band because they know they're going to have a lot of fun. There's a lot of freedom in my class. You get to, again, decide what you want to do and you get to work with your friends and work together to make music happen, which is really exciting. And more often than not, my kids look forward to my class because they know that they're going to have a nice break from their tough studies throughout the day. They can unwind, get their instrument out, play what they want to play, and then go back to their other classes feeling a little bit more um, excited to go throughout the day. I think that my band students like working together the most because not only do they get to work in an ensemble, like in a big group, but they also get to work in sections. So you get to work with your instrument or your instrument group, and you get to do rehearsals just with your friends and in a group. So they get the freedom to work together and they get the freedom to work as a group. And I think that that's one of the things that they look forward to most. The thing that gives me the most satisfaction is watching them grow throughout the year. Some of my students start out as complete beginners. They've never learned their instrument before. They've never heard about their instrument before even. And you get to watch them grow from being a complete beginner to being a more skilled musician where they just have learned so much more about music and about their instrument throughout the year. And I also love to see them grow with their friendships and see how well they get along together throughout the year because music kind of requires you to work well together because you need to be able to start and end the song together. <laughs> you need to be able to work together to make the music sound good too. So I think I just love watching them grow throughout the year. Jazz band is before school. It starts right before seven o'clock and it's every single day. And if you are in jazz band, that means that you can take another elective during the day too. Jazz band is really special. It's for my seventh and eighth graders. And as long as you have some experience in music and you have your own instrument, then you can join jazz band. You just need to audition with me to show me that you want to play and that you're willing to work on more challenging music because jazz band, does require you to improvise and learn how to do a solo on your instrument and a lot of kids are really excited to learn how to improvise in solo and just it's the same kind of thing as band but you're working together with different instruments like guitar electric bass and drum set along with the other instruments you might expect in band so jazz band is a really exciting opportunity band is one of the most fun electives that you can be in. <laughs> it is always fun. Um, my students always look forward to coming to band and you always learn a lot about music and you learn a lot about yourself in the process. I am Coach Orr, also known as Mrs. Orr, and I teach yoga and PE here at Arizona College Prep Middle School. I've been practicing yoga for over 25 years. It's been a really important part of my life and I'm a former Division I college athlete. I played volleyball at the University of Arizona a long time ago, but sports and athletics and physical fitness has always been an important part of my life. In yoga, we do a lot of fun activities. We do actual practicing yoga quite a bit, multiple times a week. We also go into the weight room once a week because that's important to reinforce all the movements that we do in yoga. We actually take notes on all the yoga poses and in the second semester our students actually teach a yoga class to their classmates, which is sort of the highlight of the whole semester in the class. Kids love yoga because it's a chance for them to calm down and to learn how to control their anxiety and stress uh, while they're here at school because Arizona College Prep Middle School is a really challenging school. Kids have a lot of stress with all of the, uh, the classes that they're taking. So they always look forward to being able to calm down and learn how to mentally focus and, and get physically stronger. And that helps them deal with uh, the pressures of being a student here at ACP. 
I think they enjoy pushing themselves because it can be a very physically challenging class. They enjoy uh, just learning how to do different things with their body, getting stronger in different areas. I know they really enjoy going to the weight room once a week because for some of them it's the first time they've ever done those types of exercises. And I know they also enjoy our fun Fridays where we combine our yoga and our PE kids and just have a really fun carefree day on Friday. I want them to know that they can learn so much about themselves, whether you're a boy or a girl or seventh grade, eighth grade, it doesn't matter. Yoga is a class for anybody. It's a class where you can challenge yourself individually. Um, it's a class where you don't have to worry about the other students in the class. We do a lot of, um, in our other academic classes here at school, we do a lot of group work and a lot of buddy work. Yoga is totally the opposite of that, where they only focus on themselves and getting to be stronger mentally, stronger physically, and it really helps to center them. It's just something, it's like no experience they've ever had before. What I've found throughout the years is all kids are interested in yoga. You don't have to have an athletic background or any type of background, but everybody can benefit from practicing yoga. I encourage all students here at ACP, whether they know if they're interested or not in yoga, to try it out because for a semester I think you'll find a whole lot of really interesting information about yourself. I've had kids after they take the yoga class give me feedback on how much they learned about themselves, how much they feel that they've grown, and they actually ask to take yoga again as, a, as an elective the next year because they know how much it has benefited them and helped them get through the challenge of being an ACP student. I'm Miss Lee and I teach 7th and 8th grade art, 6th grade art, and yearbook. I grew up making art as a kid and then um, when I went to college I decided that that was the career that I wanted so I've done every different kind of media of art, painting, drawing, sculpture, like fibers, woodworking, everything. My undergraduate degree is in visual arts teaching and I have a master's in art education. So in art class, uh, I teach as an introductory class to every media, so students will get to work with um, painting, drawing, sculpture, so sculpture will be paper mache, ceramics, fibers, so that could be weaving or cross stitch, um, and then we do a couple practice projects and then a really big project for each one. So I think kids like to take art class one because it's a social class, two because they get to learn a new skill. Uh, something maybe they've never done before, like a lot of students haven't done ceramics before, or maybe they're really interested in art and they want to explore uh, that skill more or learn how to do different things better. I think in art class, students enjoy most making ceramics because that's not something you usually get to do every day at home. Um, also just being in an atmosphere where you're allowed to make mistakes and kind of try something new and it's okay if you're not good at it as long as you have a good time and you get to hang out with your friends in class. I think that's why students enjoy art class. So I think what gives me the most satisfaction is when I see students create something new or like that light bulb goes off in their head not having created something before and then making something that they didn't know that they were even able to do or kind of that connection of wow like I made this and I really feel a certain way when I when I'm creating or when I'm um, processing through something. Art at ACP I just want students to know that it is a class for everybody and everyone's welcome so whether you've never taken art before or you've taken it your whole life uh, art class at ACP is for you because it will build to your skill level and also um, it's a good community of students who want to be there and want to have fun in their electives. My name is Dana Shaw and I teach computer science discoveries. I've been teaching for 21 years. This is my first time teaching computer science discoveries, but I also teach technology at the elementary level. In computer science discoveries, we um, learn all about computer coding or programming. So we learn um, a little bit of HTML, CSS, and Java, along with a tiny bit of uh, Python. We learn about problem solving and how computers work. We also design apps and um, create websites and games and animations. 
kids uh, who take computer science discoveries usually like to, are really into computers and like to do coding and learning more about coding and how they can um, develop games, usually. Um, they like the creativity that they can create things that haven't been done before if they want to try to do something that's already been done and put their own spin on it um, and learning how to do that in the different languages and being comfortable with those languages. What satisfies me is when students create something and they're so proud of it. They put so much hard work into it over the time that we have and they create something that is a real game or a real website and it's very exciting. I think if you're interested in how computers work and you want to learn how to code, uh, this is a great class that will get you ready if you want to pursue that in high school also. My name is Jason Salamone. I teach orchestra. I have been playing music my whole life. I started on cello and I switched to upright bass when I was in high school and I went to college for music and I studied in New York City and then upstate New York. I uh, got a degree in music education and I've been teaching orchestra ever since. We're learning about the violin, viola, cello or the bass and the students usually choose what instrument they want when they begin. And then we teach them about playing the instrument and we go through music and we look at uh, different types of uh, styles of music but we also learn different things about music history and music theory so that we understand uh, the whole picture of what we're doing and how we perform. I think in general it's a love of music and a connection to the string instruments and to orchestra music and string music as a whole. I try to change things up. I think that kids uh, first and foremost like to perform on the instrument and they like to play the music, but I try to change things up when it comes to learning things. So we do project-based learning a lot of times where if they're learning a particular style or a particular music era, we work on a project where we're writing music or we're listening to music, something connected to what we're studying. And then there are music games that we'll do and concerts and uh, there's a lot of fun things that we do to change things up and to make things interesting. I like to see that students uh, learn that they can do something that they didn't think that they could do. A lot of times when you start out an orchestra, we're all playing different things and nobody's together and it takes a lot of work to learn how to organize and to practice and to work with each other and to listen to each other. And then by the end of that, it culminates into what is your concert at the end of the semester where all of a sudden everybody's playing together and it sounds nice and uh, you know, all that hard work. I like them to see that hard work pay off because it applies to everything that you do in life. So if they can see that they started from nothing and built this great music, then they can apply that to other parts of their life. So I like to be able to show them that. When you're choosing an elective, especially something music related, a lot of times you have a connection to music and I think it's important that students do what they want to do, that it's something that's important to you, that it's something you have a connection with and I think you'll get a lot out of it if it's something you care about in that way. I am Coach Neyman and I teach PE at ACP Middle School. I graduated from ASU. I have my Master's in Physical Education and my PhD in Curriculum and Instruction with emphasis in PE. I graduated from ASU and I've been teaching here for eight years. My experience is I played football in college and I've always been involved in physical activity, YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, and after school programs. So my goal for students in class is to get them involved in a variety of physical activities and sports that they normally wouldn't be a participant in at a day-to-day -day after school program. So that involves speedball, European handball, cricket, pickleball, and in excess. I also try to get them familiar with the weight room because when you reach high school, you'll be in there working out. So we want to get you comfortable in there, working on certain muscles and working on how to increase your muscles to be able to use those on your sporting activities. PE is a lot of fun. Um, I don't talk a lot in class. I like to get them active and moving, which gives them time to bond and create new friendships in class. So my goal is for you to get active and get sweaty. I know that students sit most of the day. So in my class, I try to not to have them sit. My goal is to have them moving and sweaty before they end class. And I'll also work on their physical activity and physical overall health and wellness. Kids, the top sports that kids want to play in class is basketball, volleyball, soccer, and a variation of dodgeball games. Medic, speedball, capture the flag, uh, we have a bunch of stuff. We have sprout ball, everyone's it, capture the flag, you gotta go chase the balls. You have normal dodgeballs where you sit and you're out. Just kids want to hit other kids with dodgeballs. <laughs>
I love seeing the progression over the course of the semester, like the first day in the weight room to not being familiar with the weights and their overall wellness and how their body moves to at the end of the semester, them putting on weights and really showing good proper form. That also relates in our cardiovascular endurance test like the pacer. A young man may start off at 10 and end the semester on 20. It shows growth that they're pushing themselves and they're getting better in a day to day. I really like PE. I think it's a good opportunity for people to get experience in an avenue of physical activities. In PE, we also incorporate yoga, so those who are interested in maybe taking yoga, if you take PE as a sixth grader or seventh grader and you really like it, you can also take myself or Coach Orr as a yoga student in the future. So it gives kids opportunity to experience many sports that they normally wouldn't be a part of because they're not playing it in their family or with friends that also play that sport. I love PE. Come, come one, come all. More the merrier. <laughs> I'm Mr. Cox, uh, I teach digital media. My experience with digital media has been mostly informal. I have done a lot of learning about cameras by looking at YouTube videos and trying things out. Um, I've been making videos to use my classroom for a few years now, and I've been also trying out photography at home, um, experimenting with my own Canon camera. In digital media class, we learn how to work with cameras. We spend the first quarter working on photography. So we learn how to, how to make a picture, how to use the camera as a tool to change the aperture, the um, ISO settings, the shutter speed, and, and do other things to get different kinds of images in different kinds of situations. We learn how photography works, um, its history, and how to capture a good portrait um, and good kinds of, of images. The second quarter we spend working on video and we look at how do I how do I make a good video, how do I edit that in the software and how do I um, how do I get a good story for a movie? We make commercials, music videos, short movies, trailers. We have a lot of fun. It's, it's a project-based class. The whole semester, students are working on coming up with their own pictures, creating their own videos and different projects, and having a lot of fun doing that. It's, it really is a fun class. In digital media class, I think kids enjoy most making their own projects. So it's a class where you really can let your creative juices flow and you can make all sorts of just crazy, wacky, uh, funny, or just unusual stuff. And so a lot of classes, it's really rigid, right? You, you're taking notes, you're preparing for a test, and you're following some curriculum. We have a curriculum in digital media, but the projects are really pretty open-ended. So I'll have students will try um, doing something serious or doing something like horror based or doing something that's comedy or sports. So really anyone could take digital media and enjoy it. Whatever your interests are you can bring those in and make them a part of your projects and a part of what you work on. I get the most satisfaction out of seeing students learning new and really cool skills, technologies, trying out new ideas. Digital media is fun because you learn to do things that most people don't know how to do. Yeah, anyone can point a camera and push a button, but very few people can actually adjust the settings to get like a blurry background. Or, um, or try out new compositions to get a really like magazine worthy photograph. And so it, this is for kids who are interested in like learning how to take their craft to the next level and try it out. It's, it's an experimentation and learning class. You don't need any experience or any background with cameras or photography to take digital media. Uh, in fact, all you need is curiosity and a desire to learn. So when student council is a class, you get to work together every day, and this is for seventh and eighth graders. Seventh and eighth graders can work together to plan not only events for our school, but also plan how to make our school a better place for all of our students. So student council is all about including all sixth, seventh, and eighth graders and learning how to create activities and events for our students so that we're um, having a better school experience here at ACP. Student Council is all about student leadership, which means that students who are natural leaders who want to make great change in their schools or in their lives in general, they are going to want to join Student Council because Student Council is where you can help make decisions to help better your school and better the things that are available to students at school. 
I think what students enjoy most in student council is that they know that they're making a difference. They work together, they run their own um, class meetings, and in those meetings, they work together to make important decisions for the school, including um, things that we can spend money on, like budgeting, um, participatory budgeting, all of that stuff. So they get to work together to make those decisions, and I think they enjoy knowing that they're going to make a bigger difference for their school. Student Council is great because you get to plan the costume dance in October. You get to be involved in the talent show that happens in the spring and the dodgeball tournament. And you get to plan multiple uh, pep assemblies throughout the school year and you get to plan fundraisers. So you're basically planning all of the fun events that happen at ACP. And if you want to be behind that, then you should definitely um, join Student Council. My name is Mr. Holly, and I teach choir here at ACP. Uh, this is my 16th year in the district, and I've been teaching uh, choir for six of those. And I have a, a degree in music education, music performance, and a master's in music performance. I started in music because all of my friends were in music and I wanted to have the shared experiences that they were having. Uh, so I ended up joining a uh, band early on as a student uh, back in the eighth grade is when I started. In choir, we learn how to use our voice uh, to create a singing sound for us. So uh, we learn how to be able to sing ourselves in unison, but we also learn how to sing uh, different parts in choir so that we can create those different sounds together and we create that is called as harmony and that harmony sound is what uh, that very particular choir sound uh, that is very special that's different from uh, pop music or different from uh, music that we may be listening to on our, our personal playlist but that choir sound is very unique because we create those harmonies. I would say students are drawn to choir because they want to experience something together with other students uh, that is their expression uh, through their voice that doesn't require an additional instrument uh, to have with them. So they are their instrument and that combined with the other 40 to 50 students uh, creates this incredible choir experience. Kids enjoy singing the most and I try to create uh, music for them uh, and music choices for them that they enjoy. Uh, we end up doing uh, some songs from movies that we may see in class, and bits and bits. Uh, we may see a couple of things in the classroom as far as music, like we just uh, sang a song from The Sound of Music uh, for that, so we see some of that in class and then we get to sing those songs, so students really enjoy uh, that singing experience. My greatest satisfaction is singing, is hearing every student being able to sing with their full expression all at the same time and they're all in the same place and they're all singing the same thing or two parts or three parts and it's creating this incredible sound and experience and I get to be right in front of that uh, when we sing as a choir. No music experience is necessary for choir. If you're new to music, choir is a great option. I teach all the fundamentals and the basics and we start gaining that through that first semester for that and then we start expressing that in, in full earnest when we get to our second semester. Uh, there's very little homework for choir. We do everything in class. Uh, so it's a great way to have an experience during the day that's not necessarily academic or writing or math. It's a way for us to kind of have fun uh, with our voices and singing during the day and I try to make sure that the kids are having fun every day as well. I'm Miss Lee and I teach yearbook which is seventh and eighth grade. So I've only taught yearbook at ACP a couple years now but when I was in high school I was yearbook editor and um, I've done a lot of work with kind of layouts and graphic design and things that kind of relate to yearbook making. So in yearbook, students are gonna create layouts and do a lot of photography and go to events. They're gonna use a program through Jostens called Yearbook Avenue and the layouts will be there. You can create your own and then 
you'll learn a lot about different ways to lay things out, kind of like an intro to graphic design uh, for kids, and then also how to do different photography things. I think students love to take yearbook class because one, they get to make sure that they are getting their picture in the yearbook and their friends, but it is more than that. Getting to go to events and experience different things from a, a point of view that not every student gets to see and really making sure that everybody is included, which is something that's important to students who are in the yearbook class. I think in yearbook class students enjoy getting to take pictures of other students and events and just being a part of everything like every assembly or sporting event or clubs they get to be there and kind of document that which is something that will last forever. I think what gives me the most satisfaction uh, for yearbook students is when they create a page with a really great photograph that they took and they're excited about the photography skills they learned and they're able to apply that, especially to something that's, you know, printed and students are going to have hopefully their whole life. They get to look back on and it's something that they made and they're getting to share with their peers. I think that students need to know that yearbook, those students that come into that class have no experience with layouts or photography, any of that, and that's totally okay, I expect that. So whatever skill level that you have entering that is gonna be just fine. So um, if you like taking pictures or you like going to events, this is definitely the class for you. Hi, I'm Mrs. Falera and I teach robotics engineering. Prior to becoming a teacher, I have a degree in applied human ecology, so I did a whole bunch of work in commercial design, then I went back to school to become a teacher. Well, in robotics, it's a very exciting class where we use VEX parts and we use C++ programming skills to make a whole bunch of different types of projects. So we make mechanisms, parade toys, tanks, uh, drag race cars, um, currently we're working on carnival rides and games, and then for more advanced students they get to have free builds and make their own ping pong ball launchers or whatever they want to do. I think the most exciting part of my class is that it's very hands-on, it's very active, and kids learn skills not just with building but programming skills that they might be able to apply in future, um, things that they like or things that they want to achieve, like even career-wise. Uh, they really enjoy making their own vision of whatever the project assignment is and being very creative and being able to build it, design it, test it, fix it, program it, try it again, and just make, make their own design. Uh, I also teach uh, design modeling engineering, which uh, in that class we do two main things. We do builds, so we have design challenges, like we have a straw tower, pasta towers, we build catapults. Um, we're currently making Ferris wheels. Um, we make a whole bunch of slingshot cars and kites, airplanes, things like that. And then we also 3D print things. Um, so I teach the kids how to use Fusion 360 and using that and our 3D printers, students make nameplates, ghosts, um, gifts for other people, phone stands, and a whole bunch of projects like that. I think every day it's a uh, it, it, there's a lot of different projects and it's a lot of different um, things to challenge students. So some days you're working independently doing your 3D design on the computer and learning about the computer and 3D printing and then some days you're working collaboratively with others building rockets or um, just working on uh, maybe a new invention and so you get the best of both worlds. This year we launched rockets in that class and uh, we flew drones. So it's always a new exciting class to take. Anybody can be in my class. Uh, sometimes we have kids who are on the VEX team who are in my class. Sometimes we have kids who know a lot of programming skills, but anybody can come. I will teach you basic building skills. I will teach you how to program. 
Um, everybody is welcome. Everybody can be successful. Everybody has a place in my class. So you can come with a lot of background knowledge or none and um, you'll have a great time.